Hello guys and um, welcome to Blue Tech Empire Main Stack Tutorials. So today we are going to be continuing from where we ended from the last video and I'm going to be continuing uh, from the difference between the let and the var keyword in declaring variables. So I'm going to be showing you more examples and the difference between the let and the var keyword. So from the previous example we looked at, we saw um, we saw an example where um, I looked at the, I was trying to explain the difference between the var and the let keyword. So from this example, what you can notice is that when you use the var keyword to de declare a function, it actually has a scope of a function. So of the function does, here is a, um, the angular braces, this is the opening angular braces and this is the closing angular braces. So we call this a block. Anywhere you see um, opening and closing angular braces, code within those braces are known as a block. You call it a block of code. So for example, in the if statement, we have um, from line 18 to line 32 is the block of the if statement and is um, delimited by the angular braces. So when you declare a variable using the var keyword, the scope of the variable is within the block of a function. So we say the variable has a function scope. But when you use the let keyword to declare a variable, the scope of the variable is within um, the is within the block. So we say a let keyword has a block scope. When you use the let keyword to declare a variable, that variable has a block scope. So that's something I want you to understand. So for example, this variable amount can only be seen within this block from this between line um, 21 and line 32 and line 22 while this one can only be seen between line 24 and line 25 while this one can only be seen within this block so that's line 27 and line 28 so i just wanted to understand that so i'm going to be showing you one other example where um, we can probably understand the difference between um a function scope and a block scope so let's look at another function for example let's say function uh, um, display score uh, so let me just take some time to write this function all right so here's the example as you can see the function name is display for display score it takes in one parameter and it declare we declare a variable text using the var keyword and text is equals to your score is plus score so whatever value is passed here will be appended to this string we call this plus here the concatenation operator. I'm going to show you when we learn operator so you can understand this here. So if score is greater than 80, we are going to learn the if else statement um, soon. If score is greater than 80, we actually print, let's use greater than or equals to. We actually declare a new text variable called um, text and we assign the string you have been awarded five extra points. Then we console the log excellent text. So it's going to be excellent comma, you have been awarded five extra points. So now in this case, that's, uh, then later on now we want to print the original text. So let's see the output of uh, this function. So then we are going to see. So now let's call the function display, display score, and let's pass it 40. Now let's see the output. Now here you see your score is 40, why? Because in this case, this if statement is false. This statement is only going to be true if score is greater than or equal to 80. And in that case, line 20 and line 21 is going to be executed. That's the block of the if statement or the body of the if statement is going to be executed. As I explained earlier, the body of a statement is delimited by um, angular braces. This, and we call this um, curly braces, sorry, we call this curly braces. So in this case, since score, we pass 40 as score. So this function score here is going to be 40 as we called um, the function and passed it score is going to be 40 so in that case we can say um, in this statement is going to be false so the body is not going to be executed so we have bar text equals to your score is score and now since this one this line is skipped since the statement here score greater than 80 is false this will not be executed so we have now console.log text and text is your score is score whatever score is here is going to be your score is in this case 40 that's why we have your score is 40 now let's assume, let's see if we pass 85. Let's see what happens. Your score, excellent, you have been awarded five extra points. You have been awarded five extra points. There we can see there's a brief, there's a slight mistake. What happened? All right, now we pass 85 as score. So score is greater than or equals to 80. 
So score is greater than or equal to 80 because of course 85 is greater than 80. So line 20 and line 21 is going to be executed. So we have we here we created a, a new variable. Now because of the fact that we created a new variable here, it replaced this one. Like I told you, when you use a var keyword, it has a scope of the function. So this var here, since it has the same name, this text, it's equal, it's the same all through the function. You can see how the um, browser highlights it all within that same function. So this text variable here is, is, is seen as the same variable within the whole function. So when we created a new value here, it replaced this one. That's why when we created a new variable here, because the score was greater than 80 and we had this here, you can see it replaced this one. So that's why even after we printed excellent text, which is excellent, you have been awarded five extra points. And we came here to cons um, print the original text. What happened is this text was still printed out because this text had replaced this one. Now, to solve this problem using the let keyword, we can create a local variable here using let. Now, when we use the let keyword, it has a local scope. We, it has a, a, a block scope, which means the let keyword can only be seen within this block. Outside here, as you can see, this text is not visible. So the let keyword only has a visibility within the block in which it is defined. So in this case, we can check out what happens. You see, um, we're going to have the, what we expected. Excellent. You have been awarded five extra points. Your score is 85. That's what we wanted. Why is it like that? Because this text, creating a text using the let keyword can only be seen here. Even if you use the let keyword here, this text inside here does not affect the one outside because this text the variable here can only be seen within the block so we say when you declare a variable using the let keyword it has a block scope when you declare a variable using the var keyword it has a function scope so i just hope you can be able to understand that if you don't understand that you can ask me a question on the channel and i'll explain to you better so that's the case with this so if you want to see a proper ex explanation of this for example let's have a variable called var var let's say var1 equals to 30 and let's say um sorry let's cancel this so let's say um now we just create some random block and we say var var1 equals to um 40 and we come here and say console console dot log var1 so let's see the value of var1. So as you can see, var1 is going to be 40 because, of course, this variable has a global, because we use the var keyword, it has a global scope. So this one we created here is going to replace this one. So you see var1 is the same as this var1, which is the same as this. But if we use the let keyword in here, for example, let, now, this bar one is only seen within this block. In fact, if we wrote console, console dot log, and maybe in, in block, for example, and maybe we have it printed out bar one. As you can see, then at the end we print. Let's say out of block. Let's say we have out of block. Let's see what happens in this case. So we see. Sorry, uh, uh, okay. So we see in block 40 out of block 30. So what happened? As you can see, this let since we use the let keyword to declare this variable var1, it's only visible within this block. So within let has a block scope, which means outside the block is not visible. So outside here, this var1 is referring to this one, while inside here, this var1 is referring to this one. Even if you use the let outside, it's still the same thing. So it has no. You see this var1 here is only seen here while this one can only be seen within the block you can even try that outside for example if you declare var1 only inside the block and try to print it outside you're going to have an error because no var1 exists outside but there's a var1 inside so in this case you see in block we have 40 but out of block we say var1 is not defined which means out of this block the browser does not see var1 so I just wanted to show you that. I hope now you can be able to understand the difference between var 
and let. So from this point onwards, we are going to be using the let keyword to declare variables because it's much preferable. Under under on our special cases, we might use the var keyword, but we are mostly going to be using the let keyword for most of declaring variables from henceforth or from now onwards. So let's move to the next um, topic of today. All right, so now we are going to look at um, how to use different primitive types. We are going to start with strings. We have been using strings here before. Let me wipe this because um, so we can start on a new plate. So we have been using strings before in many examples. For example, we said if you say var, let's use let as I said, let um, name be equals to yeah, and you can say um, let um, department be equals to. CSC. So these are two strings. The first one is um, the identifier. We use the identifier name. The second one we use the identifier department. So these are two strings. We can we can print them out as you can see. Um, name followed by department. So yeah, we have two strings and there we printed them out. So yes, Emmanuel CSC. So yeah, a string is delimited by double quotes. And you can also delimit the screen by a um, single quote. So that's what I want you to understand. Um, you can also delimit the string by single quotes like this. Uh, all right. So it's also valid to delimit the string by with single quotes. So is valid. So yeah, it's the same. We have the same output and the same output. So. All right, so here is a string. Now there's some um, popular thing about string. You can concatenate string if you want to add two strings together. For example, you want to say hello world. You can say let let's say s1 equals to hello hello. And um, you see, notice the space I have in here. Okay, you say let let s2 equals to what? You can leave this outside here so you can say let message be equals to s1 plus s2 now you can say console.log message and console.log message and we can see the output here so here is the output hello world so we call this the concatenation operator. Remember, when used with numbers, is the addition operator. For example, you have let a be equals to ten, let let b be equals to twenty, and we have uh, let's say now if you say let sum b equals to a plus b. In this case, it's called the addition operator. So when you use the plus operator with um, the, with strings, it's called concatenation. It appends the two strings together. When you use them with numbers, it adds them together. So in this case, if you console the log sum, you're gonna see, uh, you see, 30. So you may be asking, what if you add a string and a number? Now, if you add a string and a number, the string takes precedence precedence that means it as assume you're trying to add two two strings together so in case if you say uh, let's say if you say s1 plus b let's see the response you have hello 20 so i just want you to take note of that if you add a number and a string, you have a string. It's assumed you are trying to do string concatenation. If you add a string and a string, it's string concatenation. If you add a number and a, and a number, it's addition. If you add a number and a string, it's string concatenation. So I just want you to understand those differences. And like I told you, you can use double quotes or single quotes with strings. So that is what you need to know. And another aspect you need to know about strings is, uh, let's say, we can cancel this. Another stuff we need to know about strings is if you have if you have a message, let's say let message message be equals to he said said I love it. All right. So here you have a problem. As you can see now, you can't use a double quote inside a double quote string. You can only, use, but you can you can't use. For example, in this case, 
if, we, if we know we are going to have double quotes in the string then we should use you have to use a single quote to delimit it in this case so let's see this how this is printed out log message so if you know your string for example is going to have a double quote he said i love it you can see if you know your string is going to have a double quote use a single quote around it let's put it like this so that you see it clearly use a single quote around it like this all right if you know you're going to have a single quote like it's rainy it's it's rainy you can now use a double quote around it so that's it single quotes can be found in double quoted strings while double quotes can be found in single quoted strings now in case you want to use a double quote in a double quoted string you can still do that um, it's raining he is raining it's raining let's say hard you want to write hard in quotes it's raining hard now you see there's an error what you can use is that we we'll do what we call escape you can use a backslash to escape this string backslash to escape it and you're going to have it inside the doubles you're going to have a double quote inside a double string you see so what we call this now because we know the i um the the browser is going to be confused or javascript is going to be confused if we are trying to close the string by having a double quote that's why we have an error in the first place because javascript for example don't know if we are ending the string here so we are telling by escaping we are telling javascript please this is not special consider this as as it is so we told it here this is not special so since we did not escape this one if we try to escape this one we will have an error but since we did not escape this one javascript now takes this to be the end now in that case if you have a single quoted string and you want to use single quotes in it in this case there's no need to there's no need to um, um let's say there's no need to escape the double quotes because double quotes can be in single quoted string normally so there's no need to escape it but yeah you see to es we need to escape it now because javascript is confused whether this um, indicates the end of the string so we need to tell it that no by escaping it so everything goes on well now you don't need to escape this it's not necessary but even if you escape it it's fine but since this is a single quote string double quotes can freely be inside so you don't need to escape them you can leave them inside so that's what i wanted to show you so remember if you're using a single quote string you can have double quotes inside if you're using a double quote string you can have single quotes inside if you want to have a double quote inside a double quote string then you need to escape it using the backslash if you want to have a single quote inside a single quote string you need to escape it using a backslash so the other escaping like new line to form a new line for example if you want to say it's rainy it's rainy and i love it you can use a backslash and say and i love love it now when javascript sees this combination of characters it knows it to go to the next line this doesn't work in the browser but it works in the console so and so you see it's rainy and i love it you see from and you have a new line why is because we use new line so you can anytime anywhere you have new line you're going to have and anywhere you have new line you're going to have it um, see you're going to have it on the next line so let's show you this cannot work in html for example if you have if you say document dot write line document dot write line and you that's now we want to show this in the browser you see what's going to happen see what's going to happen it's raining and i love it, it doesn't work because browser does not recognize this new line if you want a new line in the browser use the br tag the br tag like this and you're going to see a new line so note that new lines are not recognized in the browser so now you have exactly what we are looking for so new lines that's what we are looking for so new lines are not recognized in the browser so that's what i wanted to show you next you should understand for concatenation i can concatenation a string for example i can say let message two equals to hello plus or note that if i don't put this space here it's going to be one word so you see it's going to be one word take note yeah 
it's going to be one word but if i i need to put either a space here or i need to put a space here so any of them is going to give me that space i'm going to find that space sorry um i didn't console the lock so let's see it first like this console the log so message two so as yes, you see here we have it now like this so you see hello world is one way now i don't want it as one way so what do i do i now come here and i can put a space here which will work what happened i can put a space here which will work or hello world or i can put a space here which will work so i just wanted to see those two stuff there hello world so i just wanted to take note so you can put a space in any of them and you can even add name where i can say name name plus world so in this case i'll have emmanuel world so um and you can concatenate strings in place so i just want and you can, can concatenate more than one string so department department so you can still do like that and and like i said if you attach a number to to a string it becomes a string for example if i have a um, code let code be equals to 411 if i add this I, I, I attach it to the string i need to provide a space first because i want the space to be shown and i write for i write code you're going to see uh, see it's going to be attached to the string i told you when you use the plus operator for strings is assumed to be concatenation if you use it just for numbers it's assumed to be um, addition so now we have single and double quoted string but what you need to understand now is there's a problem so now the problem is single quoted strings cannot have multiple lines for example let's say we have some long string this is some long okay or let's say we just have some random text uh let's say we have this random text if some stuff you can see we are attempting to do multiple lines we started it here let's say uh, let's use a double quote or let's use single quote we started it here and try to end it here in this case we have an error when you use double or single quotes you can't have um you can't have like this you can't have um, it on multiple lines you can't have it on multiple lines never so that those are some of the disadvantages of um double and quoted double and double quoted string and single quoted string if you try this you're going to have multiple errors i think multiple errors yeah so but let's say now if you wanted it to be on multiple line we can do this we can end this here add a plus take note we can end that there let me show you what I'm trying to say. Look at it. Looks like there was a problem here. All right. If you want to, you can end it here. Add a plus. Come here. Continue. Create a new one here. End it here. Have a plus. And create a new one here. And end it here. I think it's okay. That should be fine. So now we can say name. All right, let's see. Sorry. So you can see now it's printed out without any error. But most times, if you're creating, for example, an HTML, you don't want to do this. For example, let's say. Um, this is an HTML. Let me use this to try to create an HTML so you see what um, happens. All right, so here is an example. I'm trying to um, use the document dot right line to display a template on the HTML. So here I have a P tag, and we are going to. I think if you, you should know HTML, if you don't know HTML by now, I think you should um, go to the main channel and go through some of the HTML there. We have done all these tags and these stuff. So here we have a P tag, we have a bold tag. And we have a br tag here we are trying to show an input element with type with a name and password or we can actually say uh, username 
and password so you see here it's a little bit clumsy but let's see how it's displayed on here so okay hello my password okay so now um, you can see we have to if you have to use multiple lines we must use the plus operator to concatenate everything it really looks bad but we just have to manage that and notice yeah i have the type text i knew i have double quotes in here that's why i used um, i knew i have single quotes in here that's why i use double quotes outside to delimit um, the text here and here i use double quotes to delimit the text so now in this case it's we have um, because of these creating templates and stuffs many times when you're writing very complicated programs you're going to realize sometimes you need to use um write html inside javascript those are, those, um, those are some of the problems stuff like react came to solve it helps you to easily write um, html inside javascript in a more um, bogus way or in a more um, stylish way we are creating custom tags so we're going to see that when we start learning react but for now javascript decided to add something we call template strings so instead of putting a string within um, um double quotes like this you can use what we call template strings template strings are these slanting quotes you can look for them on your keyboard if you have this this that's all that's all you need and you can span multiple lines without any problem so let me remove all these double quotes here So as you can see, when you use template strings, you don't need any plus, minus, you don't need any plus or stops. You just need a starting, um, the start starting opening um, template string and the ending template string. That's all. Or on the ending del um, delimiter and the, that's the quote, the starting quote and the ending quote. Remember, these are slanting quotes, so you can look for that on your keyboard. So this works perfectly well. As you can see, we have so. We have more so that's all so template strings are very important we, we are going to see them later on but it has also an advantage it helps you to include value in strings very easily without using the plus operator so for example let's say here is a template string um and you've seen how it works within a template string you can use as many single and double quotes as you want you don't it doesn't have any problem no no problem everything just works perfectly well you don't need to use backslash or whatsoever you can use double in double quotes inside for example here i can use i can use a double quotes inside and there's no problem you can use single quotes but you can't use the the template string itself inside let's see that it might be problem it may be possible all right you can use the template um quote itself inside template string because it's, for example the browser will be confused whether that's where the template string ends so you can use it but you can use double and single quotes inside a template string so next let's see how you can use for example let's say we have let name equals to three and we have um, let uh, let's say let h equals to um, let's say 34 and let's say let U U I D unique ID be equals to 34920. So let's say maybe it's a number or a code or whatever. So in this case, if we normally want to print a, a greeting message, we can say let greetings be equals to we can say welcome. So we can have this, you see, we used concatenation to append the name to this welcome name. You are dash H years old and your unique ID is, we have unique ID. So we have used all the string, but as you can see, it's very long and inconvenient because you have to use a lot of plus. You have to take note of all these spaces to make everything work perfectly. So in this case, we can say greetings, greetings, and let's see how it prints out properly. Let's see. Welcome, David. You are 34 years old and your unique ID. Yeah, it worked perfectly well. But template string allow us to even simplify this one more. For example, all we need to do is let greetings be equals to. In this case, let me wipe this. I can say let greetings be equals to welcome. Welcome. In this case, I need to put a variable. We do like this. A dollar sign followed by double curly um, braces and we can write whatever variable we want in this case is name welcome name you 
uh, we have another one like this you are age years old and your unique id is uid so as you can see sorry as you can see sorry ah here is a mistake sorry we have it as um so here is it all right so here is it all right so when you're using um template strings here is a template string because of this um quotes here this slanting quote when you're using template string when you want to include a variable within the string you start it with a dollar sign followed by curly braces with a variable name inside so here we have age and here we have unique id so it's still the same we are going to get the same results so there we get it so all right so i've shown you guys um template strings so uh here is our template string. You see how to insert a variable in a template, um, template string. You use the dollar sign followed by two um, curly braces, and then you have the, um, the variable name inside. So let's move to other primitive values. Um, we have booleans. For example, boolean can either be true or false. For example, you can say let um, past be equals to true. Uh, let pass to be equals to false so boleans can either be true or false so to understand um, and if you point it you see the uh, the id already knows it's a boolean you see type here is boolean so boolean are mostly used for conditional expressions like if else while and all the stuff we are going to see some of those stuff later on but i'm just going to do a brief example here um a, a function that prints the results of a user so we can have function print results print results and it takes a score all right so just give me some time to write that to save time all right so here we have a function print results if score is greater than 80 it writes document you pass the exams with distinction it drives the document else if does if score is not greater than 80 we now have the else the else part to be executed now the else part also has an if else if score is greater than 50 it will write um you pass the exam else that's if score is not greater than 50 it's going this one is going to happen if score is greater than 20 it's just going to write document you fail the exam so i should write here greater than or equal to so yeah if score is greater than 20 let's just use greater than or equal to which means it can either be greater than or equal to the statement to be true so document or dry line you failed the exam now in in that case else which means if this is not true this else part just prints out advice to withdraw so let's check um let's check it out so we have you pass the exam and if it's 85 or let's say if it's 90 let's check it out what does it say okay you pass the exam with distinction all right now um this can be what i wanted to explain to you that here can this statement here returns to either true or false it's a bowling so if this is true for example if you just write true here you see that will be that will be um, executed no matter what let me show you that will be executed no matter what so in this case see it's executed you pass the exam with distinction even though it's 20 why because if true is when this statement here is true this will always be executed and the else part will be ignored so but i just want to explain to you that these are boolean expressions this one too is a boolean expression it can either be true or false if it's false the else part will be executed if it's true then 18 will be executed and the else part will not be executed now this is um a this is a this is not a good way of writing the if else statement we can simplify it to be in a more organized manner i'm going to show you that shortly but i wanted to just explain to you that a boolean statement can either be true or false true or false so i'm going to show you an example again so these are boolean expressions they either equate to true or false so that's why we call them boolean expressions so let me simplify this um if else statement for you and show you how it's going to be so here is a short way of writing this you just have if score is greater than 80 we have else if we write it in one line you can also do this it's valid this is the way it's done else if score is greater than 50 do this else if score is um greater than equals 20 do this else you 
can now write uh, advice to withdraw in this case. So advice to withdraw. So in this case, we have the same thing. So let's say we pass 20 here. Let's see. We said um, we failed the exam. What if we have 15? And we have uh, advice to withdraw. All right. So apart from bowlings, we also have. Let me show. You. All right. Here's an example of a function where the, this function, um, the name of the function is get result. This get result can be any valid identifier. So a name of that's the name of the function. So here we pass it a score and it declares a bowling initially. It sets the bowling to false and it checks if score is greater than or equal to fifty. It says let's say greater equal to greater than or equal to yes. It says pass, which is that bowling. It sets it to true, else it will set it to false. We can leave this part out because by default it's set to false. It now returns that bowling. As you can see, the browser tells us this function returns a bowling because it either returns true or false. Because if it's passed, it will set this pass to true. If it's false, it set the false to um false. It set this pass to false, which is all a bowling. Now our function returns. So when we call it, we store what it returns here in pass one. In this case, we call it with a uh, um, an argument forty. In this case, we call it with an argument eighty. In this case, we know it's going to return true. So we expect pass one here to be true. False, sorry, because failed is failed. Yeah. So in this case, we ex we expect pass two to be true. So now we are going to document the right. Let's use let's say pass one and see it. And we can say let's see pass two. And see it. So in this case, let's see pass two. Let's see pass two. All right, pass one and pass two. So let's see the output. Now, yes, pass one is false, pass two is true. So you can see it, it prints out a boolean. A boolean can either be true or false. So I hope this at this point you understand boolean's. Boolean's are very simple. They can either just be true or false. So now we are going to look at numbers. We have been seeing numbers in the past, but as you can see, we have two types of numbers. We have integers and we have floats. An integer is just a number without a decimal point, while a float is a number with a decimal point. So for example, let score be equals to um, 80. In this case, this is a float. If you point it, you see it shows number. If you point this one, it shows number. But if you want to actually see, and you know you can add two numbers, you can add both. You say let um, sum or you can multiply let product product be equals to uid times times um, score so you see here let's see console the log let's see um score and let's see the output here we have 80.5 let's see 80.5 i said uid Okay, here yeah, we should put um, product, sorry, product. So we should have, there you go. So two edit and stuff like that. So just know we have two type of numbers. We have one which is, has decimal points and one which has no decimal points. This one can be called an integer and, or, and this one can be called a float. Let's just simply call them like that. So if you want to get the type, you can just write um, console, console.log. You can see, type of let's say score you give you display the type of score it's type no, notice it's type see we have number so we have type of um type of uid uid you see it's going to give us number number why type of name type of name name is going to give us uh, this string and we can have a type of of um, let pass be equals to false. So if we write type of past, type of past, past, we are going to see boolean. So all right. So I guess by this point you understand the different types. So in the next video we are going to look at different different type of numbers how you can use different type of ways of representing numbers so see you in the next video and have a nice time